Hello, I'm here with a person that I really like. He's one of the biggest names in Brazil. He's all over social medias. He's Everton. How are you today? I'm great, man. How about you? Thank you. I'm doing fine. Thank you. When okay. did you decide to be an English teacher? Uh, oh, well, uh, my story with English started when I was a teenager. And uh, to tell the truth, I started studying this because my mom just enrolled me in an English school. And she said, well, I think English is important for you. So go for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I was like, OK. And I was uh, 15. Um, so and then I just uh went with the flow and i started to learn because i loved lincoln park i still mm -hmm. do yeah. so it was pretty cool and but my english teaching career mm -hmm. um it started when i finished my first graduation uh i am graduated in administration business administration mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and i worked for international business in a multinational company here in brazil yes and uh with exportation for uh, United States and Canada mm -hmm. uh, that time. Uh, that was during the day. And at night, I went for college. This is mm -hmm. not so, this is a little bit, uh, I know it's a little bit awkward for uh, people outside Brazil, but mm -hmm. here in Brazil, we have to work during the day and to for us to pay our uh, degree at night. So we work during the day and stayed at night. That's pretty mm -hmm. usual for mm -hmm. students to do here in Brazil. Uh, and that's what I did. Uh, by the time I finished my graduation, I had this free time at night. Mm -hmm. And and then I, uh, I thought to myself, like, what can I do for to make some money or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I was already uh, having good English due to my uh, conversation activities in company. Mm -hmm. uh, then I just spread my, my resume around uh, the mm -hmm. city of Jaragua do Sul in mm -hmm. Santa Catarina State. Um, and then I, the, the, I was called by an English school and then I started teaching there. Uh, I taught there for three years mm -hmm. uh, and then I moved into personal English classes like private private English classes yeah. yes that was back in 2013 now now mm -hmm. uh, I am mostly uh, a um, online teacher okay yeah. or tutor mm -hmm. so um, I have students all over the world mm -hmm. literally you know from yeah. students from uh, Australia it's very funny because I wake up at six in the morning and these guys are having classes at 8 p.m yeah. mm -hmm. there so we mm -hmm. we have to to adapt to this uh, time mm -hmm. zones mm -hmm. Ireland South Africa mm -hmm. uh, United States and well yeah I had until last week a, a girl from UK mm -hmm. and uh, now this is what I am doing and I am merging again into groups tutoring right now mm -hmm. uh, so but let's uh, from let's come back to the beginning yeah you know, you know okay. first I I taught in the English school this is mm -hmm. pretty usual here in Brazil we have yeah. schools like uh, elementary and uh, high school but we have extra schools mm -hmm. specialized into English teaching mm -hmm. um, so in this English school, I, I had to basically follow the school uh, mm -hmm. scheduling and uh, mm -hmm. uh, how can I say the, the methodology of the school, right? Yeah. So, and it was pretty cool. I enjoyed it. However, I started mm -hmm. to create my own necessities of teaching and my own methodology mm -hmm. um, because I always thought about how can I help mm -hmm. my student not only with English you know mm -hmm. uh, but also into personal development this is one of my my uh, uh, different approaches into English mm -hmm. besides English 
I help them to develop themselves mm -hmm. with coaching tech, uh, uh, techniques and psycho, uh, psychology techniques mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So, and then I, I, I did the merging from, uh, not the merging, the, actually mm -hmm. the shift from group mm -hmm. to uh, private mm -hmm. uh, teaching. So by this first time, by the first private student, but I started mm -hmm. in my my parents house like uh, in the backyard there yes. was this small party area mm -hmm. with a table chairs and then I started there mm -hmm. and uh, you know uh, eventually I ended up with a very nice classroom with mm -hmm. best uh, uh, devices and technology and everything yeah. Mm -hmm. And then pandemic, uh, COVID uh, came along and I mm -hmm. migrated completely for mm -hmm. uh, online classes now. Yeah. yeah. I got to know you before you got to know me. I could see that you teach at a very high level. How does it feel to be at the place where you are now? Mm -hmm. Well... Thanks uh, for uh, for the words, and it's uh, very inspiring and motivating. Yes. Uh, hearing that from another friend, a professional friend like you, uh, mm -hmm. and it, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Um, but I'm really far from <laughs> where I want to be. So, mm -hmm. uh, well, teaching on the internet is. Um, uh, you know, you, you can be, you can really be a local teacher on yeah. the internet. You know, yeah. it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty possible. It's mm -hmm. pretty possible. Mm -hmm. Why? Because uh, here in my city, I could have my mm -hmm. students talking about me and actually, you know, uh, giving me this mouth-to-mouth uh, -mouth, uh, conversation where yeah. they say, hey, I have an English teacher, would like to have classes mm -hmm. with him, and they, mm -hmm. like, they talk about me, and then I have my clients uh, locally. Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty possible, and I can do this on the internet. Mm -hmm. However, there is this uh, possibility of making your work global, mm -hmm. or making it at least national. Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, I do believe that my methodology mm -hmm. uh, mixing English teaching and psychology, uh, what I'm studying now, and uh, I am on my second post graduation into mm -hmm. psychology right now. Mm -hmm. So um, I really think and I really believe that mm -hmm. I must present mm -hmm. this to the world yes. so uh, there is a book uh, and actually there is uh, a great author his name is Stephen R. Cuvey and mm -hmm. he's no longer with us he has passed but uh, he has a book called the seven habits of highly effective people and there is the eighth habit mm -hmm. uh, the seven habits uh, will give you a great quality of life Mm -hmm. and a great uh, chance of develop and take your life to another level. Mm -hmm. However, uh, the eighth habit, it's a, it's a, and a book apart from the seven is mm -hmm. find your voice and help others to find theirs. Mm -hmm. And this uh, sentence is so strong to me. And mm -hmm. I have found my voice. I have, I know what I'm doing. I know what I want for my life. Mm -hmm. And I am having success on that. So yeah. this is kind of my um, obligation. You know, I must do it mm -hmm. for people. So if I had uh, success, if I got my, mm -hmm. uh, to achieve my goals by doing this, Yes. This is, uh, I am kind of, uh, this is like my, my calling, you know, I mm -hmm. must do it to, to the rest of people mm -hmm. and try to, to help others. Because when I help them, you know, uh, it's just like, a, a, it's a, a, a end to end uh, winning, you know, mm -hmm. so 
they win, I win, they win, I win, and then now it's time to to take this to the nation and and of course to the world as well. I totally agree with you. I think that teaching is passion. You have to be mm -hmm. passionate to be a teacher, mostly in Brazil. When I have done my master's degree in accent reduction in Spain, a person came to me and asked me, why did you study accent reduction? You don't like people's accents. I said, no, you're completely wrong. The problem is accent is beautiful. Accent is part of you. Accent is an essence. What I try to do with my job is to make the person feel comfortable and be understood and understand better. Because mm -hmm. we are Brazilians. We don't need to change the accents. An accent is something that you have with you. It's part of your culture. This is one of the memories that I bring with me since I finished my master's degree. And do you have any fond memory from your career that you could share with us as an English teacher? All the testimonials from my students, you know, when they achieve some personal goals from uh -huh. them. You know, it's, uh, I have now a student going to Ohio to do the same course mm -hmm. I did there. Um, mm -hmm. I have studied in Ohio for business and business, business English and business management there for mm -hmm. the intensive course for one month. Mm -hmm. And my student, she was uh, chosen to, to do the same. So um, that's pretty cool. And they come to me and say, like, you are part of it. You know, that's... Uh, that's so cool. Um, another thing about teaching, you know, you know it's all about all this, this uh, gratitude that you receive mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. However, <clears throat> you, you have uh, said it's hard to be a teacher in Brazil. And indeed, that's one of the... Uh, when, when you decide to be a teacher in Brazil yeah. and you decide to like, work for a school, mm -hmm. a public yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, um, you know, uh, at least uh, mm -hmm. uh, something uh, uh, like very inspiring. Mm -hmm. However, <clears throat> my approach as a teacher mm -hmm. is more entrepreneur, entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I see myself like a company and I treat myself like a company and an image. I have mm -hmm. a team. And I have a group working from with me mm -hmm. uh, for uh, social media and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I have to be very, uh, I, I never forget this because I have had a, an incredible and a terrible situation with mm -hmm. money. I, I, I've, I've been broken, you know, I, broke completely bankruptcy wow. where I didn't have any uh, ways of mm. getting money from banks or whatever. Mm -hmm. I was in debt with friends and banks. Mm -hmm. So uh, very bad uh, financial situation. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that re remain, uh, uh, remained to mm -hmm. me that time was my knowledge and was mm -hmm. English. So English literally saved my life. So uh, if I could not speak English, I don't know what I could do that time because I would be just one more guy looking for a job. Yeah. And then uh, when I said, well, I can teach, you know, and I can mm -hmm. teach uh, to make money for myself by myself, yeah. you know, so mm -hmm. this is where I am so grateful and I really dedicate myself too much into teaching because I know that this is uh, one of the things, this is, this is actually the thing that brought me mm -hmm. to the, the, the condition I am today, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and like uh, the circumstances I am living now. Yeah, you are really one of the highlights that we have in Brazil. And I am so uh, I'm proud and humble to be here because I am a teacher from the countryside of the state of Sao Paulo. I live in a country town 
And if it wasn't because of the pandemic, people wouldn't have known me better because I was encouraged by my wife to do YouTube. Mm -hmm. English is my life as well. My last question for you before we go to the rapid round game, which everybody loves, is what are your um, next steps? Yeah, my, my next step is like to grow uh, mm -hmm. immensely in Brazil as mm -hmm. an English teacher, like to be one of the, the big players in the market for, with my methodology. The name of my methodology is called English in 20 Texts, mm -hmm. where I, um, I have chosen my most 20, uh, my 20 most powerful texts that I have in my, all my, my portfolio. Mm -hmm. I have uh, uh, gathered them and mm -hmm. I use them to bring students from zero to yeah. conversation level in one year, you know, uh, uh -huh. by only 20 texts. And mm -hmm. sometimes it seems to be short but it's not uh, it's a lot of words it's a lot of you know because i am an athlete i am a like not pro athlete but i'm an athlete mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so and i know that mm -hmm. to be in good physical condition you don't need many kinds of exercises you mm -hmm. need the right exercises many times yeah that's so it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's um, that's what I do in this, uh, and I really, really believe into it. And then my next step is like to grow on the internet uh, until I yeah. get uh, a, a big, uh, um, uh, how can I say, it? A, a big uh, to to become one of the big players mm -hmm. in Brazil. Mm -hmm. I <laughs> wish you all the best. Now we're okay. gonna play the rapid round game. Okay. My family mm -hmm. is. My family is um, everything, you know. Uh, I have a wife, you know, and we are planning to have a baby soon. Uh, and my background is all my my relatives, you know, parents and, and brothers. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Teaching English is um, teaching English is life, you know, uh, professional life and and love. Uh, now well, let's change for mission. Mission is a good word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the most beautiful word in English for me is? Uh, wow. I like some, some good words, but uh, I think in terms of meaning, uh, can, could it be like a sentence? Yeah. Yeah. You're that, the boss. The sentence, You're the yeah. boss. Yes. Yes. Because I, I really love that sentence I told mm -hmm. you, like find your voice and help others to find theirs. I think this sentence awesome. is amazing. Awesome. My inspiration in life is? Mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. If you had to choose another occupation, you would be a? Um, physical educator, yes. Uh -huh. Yes, I would study um, education. Mm -hmm. As far as teaching is concerned, I like it when? When my, my students do what I tell them to. <laughs> amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. It really happens all the time. Now yeah. you can ask me your questions. I am in the hot seat. Amazing. All right. Um, um, I think you, you get this much, but uh, yes. please. Um, do like a, a summary of your uh, story with English and uh, how you uh, how you work today. Well, I went to school to learn English. I was seven years old mm -hmm. uh, because I saw Madonna on TV and oh, I wow. saw that beautiful woman in front of me and mm -hmm. I didn't understand one single word of what she was saying. <laughs> And my father was sitting next to me and I said, I want to go to school to learn English. And then my father was a bank teller and he said, I'll see about that for you tomorrow. And he looked into it and he signed me up to a school where I lived. And I fell in love with English at the very first 
lesson. And then I studied for 10 years. And when I graduated, the principal of the school told me, you're not leaving the school because you're gonna be a teacher with me. And I told her, you're crazy. I can't be a teacher. She said, you can mm -hmm. and you will be. I believe in you. And then I told her, but I can teach with you as long as you watch one of my classes to give me tips and hints. And she said, I'm going to give you one hand and one tip. I'm going to put you inside of a classroom, kick your behind and close the door. <laughs> the, only, the only thing that I want you to be is to be respectful and down okay. to earth with every single student that you have. Mm -hmm. And this is like a mantra to me up until today. I do it with every single person that I teach. Mm -hmm. It was my career because I don't see myself doing anything else than teaching or dealing with English. Mm -hmm. I do it for over 25 years now because I was 17 when I started and I am going to be 44. I'm dating myself, but I don't, I don't mind. And that's what I love to do. And that's how I raise my kids. When you said that you're going to become a parent soon, I have two children. My oldest son is 13 and the youngest mm -hmm. is a preschooler. He's going to be five. And I'm married for 17 years with my lovely wife who's also an English teacher. So we teach together at our own school. We have a private tutoring school and that's how my life goes. Okay. That's how I see myself now, you know, and now I'm on YouTube meeting amazing people like you. You are amazing too, my friend. You are amazing because um, like my, my, my ne next question would be like, mm -hmm. um, how is it like being disabled uh, in, in Brazil? And mm -hmm. what do you do? Uh, what do you what do you say to yourself every day? Or how do you keep yourself motivated by by that? Or mm -hmm. you know, because, um, I we know another teacher who is disabled yeah. too. But you know, th this is so inspiring to me, my friend. Thank you for that question. And mm -hmm. one of my mottos is never give up mm -hmm. that's the first thing that i think and when i have a naysayer in in front of me okay. i tell them i'm gonna prove you wrong and mm -hmm. um and i don't see i i don't play the victim card you know i i play the right card I, mm -hmm. I don't want to sell myself short to anyone. That's what my parents told me since the very beginning. And my father has a very important sentence. Uh, since I was little, he used to say, as far as you have the brains, we have the legs. Mm -hmm. And when I met my wife and we got married, then my father said, now we can pass the baton to you. And then we are happily married. But I never give up. I'm stubborn. I do what I love. One thing that I like to highlight from my personality is that I try to do my very best when I teach. I teach with passion, but I think the key to be a good teacher is the quality that you have to be humble. I mm -hmm. think that's key in life. Amazing, my friend. Uh, well, and uh, what are your goals for 2022? To keep teaching, to keep learning English, because I, I like to say that I'll always be a work in progress. Okay. Because the more we learn, the less we know. Sure. You know? Amazing. Well, for every ah. guest, I have a sentence, a quote, a takeaway. And for you, I can only say it was a takeaway, because I learned from you. I can thank you enough, and I hope we can keep being friends and do a lot of things together because I really admire the way you work and the things you do. Thank you so much for being here today. Wow, that's 
that's so cool you know you're it's so kind of yourself and and it's uh, amazing i appreciate your words rod and i appreciate your invitation you know mm -hmm. um uh, you know, I don't, I don't have this like big channel, small channel mm -hmm. or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, this is not the point. You know, I, I am in touch with people. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you talked about humbleness, it's, uh, yeah, that's mm -hmm. really, the key, you know, and my friend, when you, when you see a person watching your live, for example, my mm -hmm. lives are not like, Mm -hmm. so hyped yeah, up yeah. you know like no we, we see like mm -hmm. but when you understand that for example three people mm -hmm. decided to dedicate their lives mm -hmm. their time to you that yeah. moment yeah be there with you and not with anybody or anything else mm -hmm that they could be mm -hmm. with. That's what matters. I agree with you. Numbers, yes. they are um, a result. Yeah. But that's what really matters. You made me remember of a sentence that I can tell you. I am because we are. Yeah. Uh -huh. so... Because nobody does anything alone. Mm -hmm. And anyway, when you see a a small number and you give your heart yeah. into it yeah. when there is a big number yeah. and you still give your heart you know uh you are ready for big numbers so just to finish this was my friend everton mm -hmm. i am so happy to have the chance to tell his story during this interview this chat it was a huge pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much. See you all next week. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Thank you, Rod. Uh, Thank appreciate you. your invitation. And we'll see you next time. Thank you Thank very you. much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello, it's Rod's friend here, Gino from Real Everyday English. Sorry for interrupting your video. I just want to make a quick recommendation that you subscribe to Rodrigo's channel. He's an amazing guy. He's so humble. He's so dedicated and he creates absolutely fantastic content. See you people soon. Bye-bye. God bless.